it's me, Stuart, and I thought I'd do a really good deep dive into all things black paint. So let's take a look at what I've got. I thought it would be interesting to paint a variety of things. So I've got a plastic thing here. I've got a metal thing. I've got some wooden things. And I've also got some paper, which will act a lot like canvas. And I think, hopefully, that covers most of what you might do with the paints. If there's questions, you can always use the comments or get in touch and I'll be really glad to help you. Obviously, by now, you've probably seen this stuff. This is Black 3.0, which is the latest version of the black paints we've been creating together. It is currently the blackest acrylic paint you can buy in the world, and it absorbs just about 99 point something percent of visible light. In English, what makes things look really black is how much light they suck in and how little light is sent back out. So it's very matte, so it doesn't reflect light. And we'll have a look at that later. The other thing I'm gonna show you is Black 2.0, because a lot of you purchase the Black 3.0 or use it in your work, and you don't realize just how awesome Black 2.0 still is. Even though it's not as black as this stuff, it's still really useful, and I use it almost every day in my work. So I want you to get a sense of that. I've also, just for comparison, decided to use this. This is Liquitex. Mars Black Professional Quality Paint. I actually love this stuff. I use it in my work a lot as well. So I just wanted to show you the difference between a really good quality acrylic and these super blacks and actually how they're different and how they act differently. I will tell you that, just so you know, we are now also making a really large size of Black 3.0. This is a whole litre of this stuff for those of you that like to work really big. So anyway, let's have a look at what we've got. As I say, Black 3.0 is an acrylic paint. How does it work? Um, there's so much chemistry in here. One of the things I'm asked most often is, can't I just have the pigment out of it? No, you can't. There's about 100 different ingredients in here. It goes through loads of processes to make the paint. And thanks to you lot, we raised enough money on Kickstarter to make this a reality. So no, I can't just take the colour out. It won't be super black anymore. It's a whole system of ingredients that make a paint. So let's pour some out. As you can see, it's quite runny and it's a black acrylic paint. It doesn't look special yet, does it? It's not actually until it dries that this stuff goes super black, almost like a black hole, almost like a void. Black too, always give it a shake. I write on here, shake well, and so many of you don't shake it, and then you write to me, you go, oh, it's all a bit weird and runny. It's just because you didn't shake it. Always shake your paint. In fact, always read the instructions on the back of the paint. I write them for a reason. It's to help you make better works. This is the lovely black tea. And I don't know if it's coming out on the camera, um, but it's not quite as black. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's still very black. It is a lovely paint. And Liquitex, again, is a little bit less black than black tea. So in terms of blackness, you've got your normal acrylic, your black two and your black three. Next thing you need to do when you use any of these paints is use a really good, high quality, soft brush. This is a synthetic brush and it's very soft and it's not gonna leave loads of ugly brush marks in your work. I've got these cheap ones, like this sort of thing, these sort of cheap, scratchy brushes. They're like a comb. You will not get a good finish from this. Also, when you buy a decent quality brush, it's gonna last you. you. You know, I've got brushes here, some of my old faithful favourites, things like this chap. It's probably been with me for 15 years and it's beautiful. So, you know, they all develop a personality over the years, things like this. So, you know, using good brushes is nine tenths of the battle, honestly. Right, so let's have a little look, shall we? Let's swatch them. So this one, it's a really good high quality acrylic paint made by Liquitex. And that's it on paper. And it'd be the same on canvas or any porous surface. You know, you might be painting on wood or uh, anything else. Here it is on the metal. We'll just paint it on the handle here. And you can see it's not sticking very well. So it's gonna need quite a few coats there, isn't it? Um, and then on the wood, obviously this is very porous, isn't it? So let's see, see it goes very nicely on that. And one of the things that I'd like to show you, if I could show you anything, I want to show you how to paint because nobody showed you how to paint. It's really simple, watch this. Take 
a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush. Not much, I've got hardly any. And then when you come to paint with it, your job is just to remember how far can I make this tiny bit of paint go? So when you start, you want it nice and even and you want to spread it out. And I'm, again, I'm still using the Liquitex here. It's a lovely black paint. This is the Mars Black by Liquitex. And look how far you can actually go with that without having to dip it in again. That's what you want to be doing with, when you paint. This is not painting. See? Put a massive globule of it on the thing and then try and spread it out. So many people do this sort of thing. That's, that's not it. Okay, let's have a look at what Black 2 does. It's very different. You'll see that the, uh, the Liquitex one, like you'd expect from an acrylic, is quite shiny, isn't it? I mean, I know it's not completely dry, but it's reflecting light. Now that's Black 2 on paper. Not very remarkable. Not that much blacker, a little bit blacker. But, but where it comes into its own, and what I use it for, and why I love it, is just how well it covers. And you see that on objects like this spoon. So if I put black two on here, you remember when we did the, li the Liquitex earlier, it's a bit streaky. Watch this, tiny bit on my brush. Watch this, it just clings to it. And it's just utterly mattifying that. It stopped it being shiny. It goes on really well on surfaces that are shiny or glossy. And that's why I always recommend priming things that are glossy or shiny with black two before you use black three. Let's have a look what it does on wood. And as you'd expect, again, a little goes a very, very long way. Even the metal bits <laughs> are getting very well covered. And as this dries, this black 2.0, the second blackest black, you'll see that it starts to reflect no light. It has no sheen at all and it will completely mattify that. It's lovely stuff to use, you get the idea. Now, the moment we've been waiting for, I think, let's have a look at the Black 3.0, the blackest acrylic paint that you can get at the moment. Again, little bit on the brush, little goes a long way. It's a high quality paint, it's very pigmented. Look how that is going on. Isn't that just utterly delicious? God, I just feel inspired using it and just thinking of all the ways it can, can work. Now, you're not going to get to that super black black hole yet until it's dry. And a good thing to remember is it actually needs to dry overnight. Now let's see what happens when we paint it on wood. And can you see, it's not quite as good at sticking as the black too. So it, I would say I would quite like to give that two coats. You, you need to let this dry before you give it another coat. I know some of you I've seen online, you like then dip it in again and give it another coat. That's not it, that's just like piling up a load of paint. But let's have a look at what it does on the metal, because this is really interesting, I think. You'll see the problem with it. Can you see? It's not sticking at all. So the first coat on metal, you want to go nice and flat, but you're gonna need to let that dry to key that surface and give it something to bite onto. And do is you can actually just paint over the black 2.0 with the black 3, and that's a really good idea, especially on something shiny. So let's have a look at how that goes. So that's the black 3 going over the black 2, and again, I'm using a tiny bit of paint, spreading it out nice and evenly, just a little bit on the brush. And now, rather than waiting for that to dry, I'm going to hair dry it because it looks really shiny. Watch this. And it's going to get blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker till it is so <laughs> flipping black, it's almost like it's covered in velvet. And oh my gosh, from where I am, that is looking like it's just like a flat shape. And that void effect that we're getting out of that black three is only going to get more and more and more as that dries overnight. So that is crazy black. And that's how you how much blacker it is than the others, especially if you see that one, which is reflecting a lot of light. Can you see the difference? Let's see what happened here. Because remember, I put that 
one coat there just to key it to show you the other way of doing it because you might not have any black too to put down as an undercoat so you can just over the top of three itself give it a second one and the second coat will stick so much better but again you'll probably need two or three coats of black three on a shiny surface whereas the black two if you remember just went on one coat done and it sticks to almost anything it's like even glass i've painted with black two it's unbelievable but let's hair dry that because it's fun here we go i love this i never get bored of this watching it get blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker as it dries look at that isn't that amazing i love it do you know what? I'll never get bored of that. I mean, the fact we made this is amazing. And that's another really good tip. If you can't be bothered to wait for acrylic paint to dry, just hair dry it. I'm never without my hair dryer in the studio. So before we wind up, I just wanted to say that the thing that makes art great, of course, is the idea behind the art, not necessarily the materials or the thing you make. I mean, skill and craftspersonship is a good thing, but um, there's more to it than that. So the ideas you have for what you want to make with the blackest black in the world is what actually matters. And hopefully some of what I've shown you will help you execute your ideas in a really, really powerful way and make them stronger. So let's look at what we did. We took three paints. We took a very good acrylic black paint made by Liquitex. We took the black 2.0, which is very matte and very black. And then we took black 3.0, the blackest black acrylic in the world. And we painted it together on lots of different things to have a look at how it behaved. We started off on paper and it'll be the same as canvas or cardboard or whatever. The Liquitex is kind of shiny, of course, there's a gloss to it, it is reflecting light, it's probably picking it up in the camera. The black too is very matte, isn't really reflecting much light, but in all honesty, it's not that much blacker than this one. This one just looks blacker because it's glossy. This is slightly blacker actually, but the black three, very matte, very black, reflecting no light. Next thing we did was we, we had a little go on the spoon and it would be the same as if you wanted to paint something plastic or you wanted to paint anything with a sheen type surface. And what we realized is you can't just paint black three on neat it needs some sort of undercoat or a couple of layers of black three at least putting it over black two is a really great thing because black two sticks perfectly to the thing normal acrylic unfortunately doesn't really stick very well it's a bit lumpy and scratchy even with a good brush then we had our pegs let me see if i can get them in the right order for you there you go i think you can see can you guess which one's which I certainly can. Um, black three, acrylic paint like you might be used to using, and then black two. So black two, very matte, not quite as black as the 3.0. So that's my deep dive into black paint. Again, what makes a paint good? Good quality pigment. You know, I spent so long getting these ingredients for you from all over the world to get the really high quality pigment. The amount of pigment in the paint matters. And I don't care what people say, if you are paying very little money for a paint, it's because it doesn't have much pigment in and it's full of binders and extenders and things like that and fillers. So really it's about that. And the other reason why Black 3 is great is because the actual acrylic we use is a whole new system that can hold more acrylic than any other and the pigment we use, the black magic pigment, is what gives it that rich, deep, velvety colour that a lot of you are using in your work. So anyway, I hope that helps and you can make some amazing things with the paint. I hope you enjoyed the deep dive with me. If you've got any questions, just get in touch. I'll be glad to help you. And I can't wait to see what you do with the paint. It is such a joy to know you're out there making such amazing stuff with the stuff that we make here in the studio. It means the world to me. So keep doing it and I'll keep making more of it for you. All right, good luck with your work. Bye.